Um, but let's go ahead and get started. So, okay. For those of you who don't know Dr. Donwood, he is the creator of the Inspired Performance Institute and helps, he is a psychologist. He has been a guest on Dave Asprey's podcast, on Ben Greenfield's podcast. If you haven't been to his website, it's inspiredperformanceinstitute.com. Um, I am going to give you, he has offered to give you, I'm gonna put this in the chat. Um, he has offered to give you all a special gift for today for being on this call. So you should definitely stay on until the end. Um, and without further ado, I just, I want uh, Dr. Wood to start joining us today because, uh, or start telling us about the amazing work he does today. And I'm gonna ask him a lot of questions and you all are gonna have the chance to ask him questions, but he has helped people get through having their legs blown off after the Boston Marathon, getting over crystal meth addiction. He's helped me through numerous traumas. Um, so he's really the best out there. So thank you, Dr. Wood, for taking time out of your day to really join and educate my people here. Thank you. I'm so glad. I love the work that you're doing. So anything we can do to work together to help is, is great by me. So. so can you kind of give us the the profile of someone who comes to you and why they come to you and how they go through your process and who they are at the end of your process. Well, it's really, we get such a wide, you know, spectrum of types it's of fast. people because sometimes, um, you know, for example, like you had mentioned the Boston Marathon bombing survivors, Rebecca Gregory was three feet from the first bomb uh, lost her left leg and was suffering with post-traumatic stress for five years before she came to see, see me. And she was told about our program and said, you know, I heard that you can eliminate post-traumatic stress in four hours. And I said, yeah, we can. And she says, well, it sounds too good to be true, but she says, I'll, I'll try anything. I'm desperate. I, I have nightmares every night. And uh, I took her through the program and she's basically been able to eliminate no more nightmares, no more post-traumatic stress. And I work with a lot of Vegas shooting victims, people like that, but I also work with CEOs, executives, um, world-class athletes. And the reason we call this the Inspired Performance Institute as opposed to a trauma therapy program is I start from the base that there's nothing wrong with anybody. Everybody's fine, everybody's mind works perfectly fine. Each person has been affected by their individual events and experiences, and that is interfering with your ability to stay present and in the moment. And so whether or not you've been a victim of that big T trauma or something I call emotional concussions, which are sort of those small T traumas where, you know, a bully in school, maybe somebody who, a friend that, um, you know, left you or, or gave you a hard time, a teacher, a coach, those kinds of things also add up. And everything is relative, you know, because people will come in sometimes and they'll say, well, you know, I, I watched Rebecca's testimonial and I don't have anything like that. You know, I've never experienced anything that horrific. And yet at the same time, it's all relative because if you've had other kinds of trauma, that could also be affecting you in much the same way that it affected Rebecca. So the idea behind it is to get your mind reset. And our minds and bodies are designed to heal, as I'm sure Esther has told you many times. And we're big believers in that. We're designed to heal. All we have to do is get the stuff, the things that have been going on in your life that's interfering with your ability to heal, get those resolved so that your maintenance levels can go up. Daniel, oh, you ready to go? Whoever it is, there we go. Um, okay, so one of the um, light bulb moments I had with you, Dr. Wood, when we were working together is that you taught me that trauma really, although it's in the past, our bodies still very much think it's in the present. And it's, that is just old error messaging in the brain. So can you speak a little to that or kind of explain like how trauma imprints itself upon the body 
so that you know we can be in our 40s, 50s, 30s, and remember something that happened to us in childhood like it was yesterday. So can you kind of explain how the brain processes and holds on to trauma and how it can re- how you teach people to release it? Yeah, great question. It, it was one of the things that I discovered in my research, you mm-hmm. know, as I, I talk about in our program that I never experienced trauma the way my wife had experienced trauma and my daughter had. I had led this pretty quiet, reserved life. I thought everybody lived in this idyllic childhood that I had with these amazing parents that never yelled or screamed or raised their voice or hit us and never got bullied and never had any kind of real trauma. So I just, my nervous system was regulated pretty much throughout my childhood. I get bumped along the way, but everything would regulate pretty quickly. So I believe that because I had learned very early on naturally how to regulate my nervous system by being in this environment, that a lot of people haven't had that. And here's where the issue, when I started doing the research, which was really to help my daughter first, you know, which ultimately helped my wife, is I discovered that when we have this unresolved trauma, it creates inflammation in the body. It's going to show up somewhere in the body. For my daughter, it was Crohn's. For my wife, it's Hashimoto's. And so that unresolved trauma, so many people have autoimmune issues that have had this trauma. And here's what I discovered in my research is that your subconscious survival brain is operating about 95% of everything that's going on for you. So we believe that we're very advanced creatures, but about 5% of our brain is advanced. 95% of it is still working on that primitive instinctual survival base. And that's creating glitches and error messages. And here's why. Because that part of your brain is always in survival mode, it's fully present and in the moment. So everything for that part of your brain is happening now. Now, humans are the only animal, only species on the planet that stores explicit details about events and experiences. So everything you've seen, heard, touched, or smelt in your lifetime has been stored and recorded in memory. Now we also have the the memory, we have two memory systems really, explicit memory, which is explicit details, events. We also have what animals have, which is that procedural associative memory where we learn through repetition and association. That's how animals learn. They don't store the information about what happened, what they ate for dinner last night, we do. Now, because what you ate for dinner last night wasn't very disturbing or threatening to your survival, that was stored as a fairly low resolution file. Here's the issue. When we have a traumatic event in our lives, all your senses are heightened, sight, smell, hearing. So your mind is recording this information in high definition, very, very bright and intense, taking in tremendous amounts of information and storing it in memory. So here's where the glitch happens. If 95% of your mind's operating in the present, seeing what's happening now in real time, when it accesses memory and sees these bright, intense images and information, when does it think that information is actually happening? Right now. So the reason you're experiencing an emotion, a feeling, a sensation, or having thoughts is your mind's calling for an action. It wants you to do something. So when Rebecca came in and sat down and started telling me what happened that day at the Boston Marathon, she's shaking and crying. And I said to her, I says, Rebecca, do you know why you're shaking and crying right now? And she said, well, because I'm talking about what happened to me. And I said, right, but your mind thinks there's a bomb about to go off and it's trying to protect you. There's nothing wrong with your mind. Your mind is just looking at old information in real time and creating a response. That's what we fix. And that's life changing when you can change that. It is, I mean, I carried around, you know, I went, I, if any of you, you, all of you are here may have read the newsletters I sent out about my story with Dr. Wood, which was that um, for me, I stopped sleeping when my son was born and originally, and he's 14 now. Um, and originally I thought it was due to, you know, I was breastfeeding you know, round the clock, he was a terrible sleeper. Um, but then I couldn't fall back asleep. 
And then after I weaned him, this just, this went on and on and on. And I was going to doctors and trying hormones and um, trying supplements and trying um, antidepressants. Then I was hooked on Xanax and just the withdrawal from that was horrible. And, um, you know, once I talked to Dr. Wood, he got me off a stack of sleep supplements in about two days because he made me understand the reason why I stopped sleeping was that my brain was up all night trying to figure out like, how do I breastfeed? How do I be a mom? How do I write books in the meantime? How, how, how can I solve problems? I didn't understand what was happening with my son. I was a brand new mom. I beat myself up for not being, you know, the perfect mom and doing everything right, not knowing what I was doing. So all night long, my problem, my brain was trying to solve the puzzle of motherhood and solve the puzzle of um, not sleeping. And so once he said, you know, the change is safe and he had me do, we, we had a four hour call together and uh, listened to about 30 days of meditations and, and boom, the, the results happened. And I was like so happy and light and um, really free from all of this. And I've sent uh, quite a few of my clients to Dr. Wood as well. And they've had a very similar experience of releasing this trauma. Um, so what do you say to someone, Dr. Wood? who has done therapy, because throughout this process, right, I did cognitive behavioral therapy, and I tried all different, you know, I did a lot of emotional freedom technique and tapping, and those can be very useful modalities, but they didn't stop the insomnia, whereas yours enabled my body to say, nope, it's, you're good, you're done, you did everything you could have at the time to solve it. So what do you say about, <clears throat> like, how does your program, I mean, I know you just did quite a bit of explanation, but how does it really, what differentiates your work between, you know, therapy and all the it's other modalities? Those things that they didn't, they helped, but they didn't. Apologies. Let's get this. Can you all mute, please, kindly? Mute? Okay. Sorry, Dr. Wood. Go ahead. Um, a lot of the modalities right now are teaching people to live and manage and cope with these symptoms. And when I started doing the research, I really looked at why would we want to do that if we could fix it? How can we fix it? And what I discovered is, is it's coming from the way the memory has been stored in this high definition. So if we could figure out a way to, so, and, and here's a little exercise everybody can do. We can do this as, as a group together. If I asked you what you ate for dinner last night, I want you to give some thought to what you ate for dinner. So if everybody does that right now, think about that. Now, as you're thinking about that, even though I can't see everybody, what you've done is you've looked up and you've accessed memory as to what you ate for dinner last night. And I'm sure everybody saw pictures of what you ate or maybe where you were when you ate it. That's how you stored the information about dinner last night. Now, no animal does that. So if you have a dog, that's why you know you can feed your dog the same thing every day because he doesn't remember eating that yesterday. We store the information about all those things. That makes us very unique. Now, when we have that high definition traumatic memory, right? that's gonna activate your nervous system. Not because there's anything wrong with you. That's what your system is supposed to do. If it thinks it's a lion, it's going to respond as if it's a lion, even though it's information about a lion. So what we're going to do in our process is I'm going to get your mind to reprocess that high definition information about the threat into the same format as to what you ate for dinner last night. And then you can recall it just like you did about what you ate for dinner, but you're not going to be responding to it because the mind's not going to feel a threat. And how we do that is that's really, I think, what the magic of what we're doing is in four hours, I can get you into such a restorative mindset that your mind is in, you remember, Esther, how long did it take us? We literally did the event in two minutes, three minutes. Yeah. We didn't need a lot of information. You know, I work with a lot of people who have had some serious trauma, you know, a sexual assault. The last thing they really want to be doing is sitting there sharing all those details about that event. I don't need any of that information. I can do it visually. I can do it a number of different ways. 
that it's not important for me to know the details. All I need to do is get your mind to reprocess it. Once it takes that information and reprocesses it into the same format as to what you ate for dinner, it'll stop calling for the action. So this is probably the best way to explain it. If you have an emotion, is the emotion appropriate to the situation? So if you were somewhere and somebody was threatening you and you felt fear, that's an appropriate emotion because your mind's trying to protect you to get you to run. But if you think about something that happened to you five years ago and you're feeling fear, that makes no sense. What's your mind trying to get you to do? Run. Five years ago. It's seeing it in real time. Your subconscious mind has no relationship to time. Everything is now. And so it's only our conscious mind, the 5% of our, which is really our intellect. It's created the world we live in and it's brilliant. But if there's a survival threat, survival will always override reason, logic, and intellect every <laughs> single time, right? And so you can't stop it. And so when you work through, you know, the different kinds of modalities are going to teach you, okay, when you experience that, breathe, meditate, do these different things. And, and that's all fine. I know why that's being done. But what, what I said is let's fix it so that those become much more effective in helping you deal with current things that you're dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis. That's where therapy is good. So if you've got a current situation, you know, a, a relationship or something that you're dealing with, that's happening now, all those kinds of tools are great to use to try to help, you know, recalibrate you. The glitch is coming in is when all that old information is coming in and aggravating your nervous system. Does that make some sense? Yes, a lot. So, okay. What happens when, let's say, right, you resolve a we work together, you resolve my trauma. But then other things happen down the line, mm -hmm. right? New traumas happen, that's life. Like life throws many curveballs at us. So how do we teach our brains? Let's say someone has gone through your program. Let's say I've gone through your program. Um, I can use me as example, because I am going through it now, right? You and I did our beautiful work together. My nervous system calmed the heck down. But we just went through a big event with my son where we had to, you know, we moved his schools and there was a lot of emotional upset around what happened, the circumstances around it. And my nervous system is like you, it, it's just like that tight rubber band, you barely have to snap it and the whole body's vibrating again. So how do people manage like continual assaults or just life events that, because the more I learn about science and hormones and adrenal health and cortisol, it's like your body gets wired to learn to have, it can either become more resilient to stress or less resilient. So how do you teach it to kind of recover and, and, and reel it back in <laughs> into a place of joy and, understanding that it is what it was and right. something that is now in the past doesn't have any bearing on your day-to-day -day or the future. So that's why practicing things to continue to keep yourself present. Um, and like you said, that's a present, you know, situation. Yeah. So the tools that I gave you during our, you know, session are the tools that you use to keep you staying there so that you can then manage your way through it. Yeah. And you're gonna, now here's what's gonna make it better. Had you not done that, all the old stuff along with the new stuff, right? Would be aggravating your nervous system. Now you're just dealing with the new stuff, which is a lot easier to do when you don't have a whole bunch of other data coming in and overwhelming you. Okay. Right? Yeah. Hear what you're saying. Okay. So just keep using those tools because like I said, when I was a child, I would get bumped every once in a while, but I would come back into regulation so quickly. I didn't realize I was doing it, but my system was being trained to respond back into staying present. 
And when I met my wife, that made no sense to her because she'd been so deeply traumatized and injured as a child that she would then be saying, why are you still not mad at that person? Why are you like, how could you go and talk to him after what they just did? And I go, well, what do you want me to do? That didn't make sense to her because if she tried to do that, her system would have been on fire. And mine was like, well, he's not going to rip me off this time because now I know, right? right? And I'm able to deal with them, but I'm going to be a little more cautious now, but I wouldn't get dysregulated. She could never do that. It would be very hard for her to do. In fact, even when I first met her, she swore me to secrecy. I could never tell anybody about what she experienced as a child. All that shame and guilt that came along with it, right? It was like, don't let anybody ever know. They'll judge me. What will they think about me? What will they think about my family? And now she, she has no problem talking about it. Yeah. No problem sharing it. You know, it was funny, my husband and I were just talking about how great it is that we live in an age that normalizes and gives voices to feelings and situations. Um, everything from sexuality to, um, you know, to past sexual abuses, to trauma, to uh, anxiety. You know, kids today have language for words and feelings that we didn't have growing up. It just wasn't discussed. It certainly wasn't normalized. So we do live in this beautiful time where the world is shifting and, you know, kindness is uh, recognized as being very important and, and very necessary. But also healing past hurts is very commonplace to talk about and really essential because the, so the flip side, so first of all, does anyone have any questions for Dr. Wood? Um, if so, you can post them in the chat box and, um, or raise your hand. Um, okay, great. Thanks Kelly for logging on. Um, you know, Anyone has questions, pop them in the chat box and I'll unmute them because this is a golden opportunity to ask Dr. Wood questions. Um, and I'm sure Dr. Wood, you're gonna get, we're gonna have this live on YouTube. So you're gonna probably sure. get people reaching out. Okay, Diane wants to know what is one of your tools that you employ that you help people use to get started in their healing? Um, well, basically what we do is in the four hour session, the first hour and a half is really education and science. It's very conversational. Um, I'm going to share with you how our minds are working and, and get you to understand how that has happened. And once you understand the science behind it, it takes all the mystique out of it. And all of a sudden it's like, wow, that makes so much sense. There's nothing wrong with me. Right. And what I explained to him is if I lived your life exactly the way you lived your life, I would be doing exactly what you're doing. It's just how we respond. It's our, our nervous systems and how they respond. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I just saw somebody posted on there is it, how is this different from EMDR? I studied EMDR and EMDR is a great modality and it can really help. The difference is, is EMDR takes longer and is a little more intrusive, like you have to go into a lot more detail. Ours, you don't have to, it's quicker and faster, but EMDR is good as well. And EMDR really depends on the practitioner too, that's taking you through it on how well they're trained and how well they understand it. Mm -hmm. um, our program basically is four hours and then the 30 days of audios and that's it. Mm -hmm. And I find it's even more effective. And also what's effective is um, Dr. Wood has you create symbols and anchors to um, cue your body to be in a calmer, uh, to put your nervous system in a much calmer place. So you can just cue your brain up to say, okay, it's, it's safe, change is safe now, you're safe, you're not actually in danger. And, it, and then your brain says, oh, right, I'm okay, okay. It gets you into that alpha brainwave state. And when we're in that alpha brainwave state, our mind is super relaxed and super focused. And so we're going to train you. I'm going to give you the tools to instantly do that. And then when you go into that alpha brainwave state, that's why this works so well for athletes. 
So I worked with Tim Burke, who's a uh, long drive golf competitor. He competes in those long drive championships. And that's one of those games of just brute force. Everybody thinks that's just the guy who's the biggest, strongest, hits it the farthest. Yet in actual fact, they play better when they're relaxed. And so after Tim went through our program, he uh, won his first two out of the three tournaments he played in and made the finals of every tournament all year long. And after he got into the finals of the very first tournament he played in after going through our program, I texted him because I saw he was in the finals and he was on the golf channel. And I said, how are you feeling? And he texted me back and said, alpha, baby, alpha. He was in <laughs> complete alpha brainwave state. He said, I've never been so relaxed playing golf. And that's really the key to performance. The key is to be able to calm your nervous system down so you can stay within yourself. And that's where we perform at our best. That's where we're designed to be. But our nervous systems get dysregulated by a whole bunch of stuff. Well, and that's the interesting thing too, is, you know, I do um, Dutch test, which it's, it's a dried urine test for comprehensive hormones. And we look at adrenal function. I look at cortisol um, patterns and people who've had, and I, of course I look at hormones, um, estrogen, testosterone, progesterone, but I specifically have spent, you know, the last three or four years doing the Dutch and looking at patterns of people, cortisol patterns of people who've been through trauma and all except one of my clients, one of my clients spent about 10 years doing it. She, you know, is very at peace with her past traumas and she had a normal cortisol curve. Most people and including myself, Dr. Wood have very low cortisol like they're at the burnout phase where it's just that fight or flight center is rocking and rolling and burning steam at both ends and it's low energy and poor sleep and all those things. So it's really important. And yes, I absolutely support people with supplements to uh, you know, bring up and extend the half-life of their cortisol and bring their energy up. But stress management is a huge piece of it. And if I've treated someone nutritionally and they're not some people really respond, but if they're not, I send them to Dr. Wood because like, until you deal with your trauma, you're not going to physically heal yourself. You can't, you know, all the supplements and diet in the world won't change your physical being if you don't heal from your past traumas. Yeah. And like I said, with that unresolved trauma creates this loop and the loop is continually keeping the system in an active state of fight or flight. Yes. And if that's going on, that's going to burn out. That's why my wife ended up with Hashimoto's. I mean, she was just in constant flight mode and it didn't matter. So even though I was married to her and she was living in the world that I grew up in. So she now moved from this, you know, horrific kind of traumatic childhood into living with me, which was very similar to what I grew up with. And it wasn't calming down. And it wasn't calming down because even though she was out of the environment, right, her mind was not out of the environment. Yeah. Her memory kept her in that. And so that was what was activating. And it didn't matter what I did. I couldn't calm it down until I understood and did all the research to say, now I know why. It's because if I said to my wife, no, I don't like that, she could tear up and want to start to cry and say, why are you mad at me? That didn't make any sense to me. I would be saying, why is she thinking I'm mad at you? I didn't say anything to make her think I was mad. But in her mind, she had learned to listen very carefully to the way her father spoke. So she could identify when danger was coming. So if my voice changed the slightest inflection, because maybe I was frustrated on the drive home or something at work that day, but I'm not aggravated with her at all right? But I can't hide that in my voice. I couldn't hear it. You could pay me. I would never have heard it. But to her, I was yelling. So anybody who has had a lot of trauma as a child are super sensitive to sound. They hear the slightest changes. So she would be crying because she felt threatened. And yet we thought it was because of what I said, and it wasn't. It was because of all the trauma earlier in her life. If you don't get that fixed, it's going to show up somewhere in your health. Yes. I've been healthy my entire life. I've never get sick. 
I've, we moved to Florida 30 years ago. I've never been to a doctor and never had to go to a hospital for anything. And I believe it was because, and here's the way I explain it. Think about our cell phone. We plug in our cell phone at night, right? Just like we go to sleep. The purpose of it is to recharge, right? So that we have 100% of our energy the next day. So if you wake up and you turn on your phone and 30 apps open up, your energy is going to drain really fast. So if you've had a lot of traumas, right? Now your mind's trying to do something about those traumas and trying to fix it or attend to it, right? Yeah. How much energy do you have left for maintenance? Very little. So I had lots of energy available for maintenance. So I could, we never understood why when I played hockey, I, would, I, I had six concussions, 60 stitches at playing hockey. And yet I never missed a hockey game. And the, the attitude was, well, you just seem to heal really fast. <laughs> of course I held, I healed fast because I'm getting two or three times more restorative sleep than my teammates. So I didn't realize a lot of my teammates were being abused or sexually, physically, emotionally at home or having stuff going on. Well, they're not going to heal as fast as me because I didn't have that. Now I understand that. Exactly. Okay. That's exactly it. And I, I see, you know, so many of my clients with thyroid and Hashimoto's because the throat chakra, you know, if you're not able to give words to your trauma and you're blocked, I literally had a client, the one who had the good, the, the good cortisol curve after healing, she lost her voice while she was telling me about her trauma, literally lost her yes. voice. Absolutely. In the middle. And then at the end, got it back. It was, I have never seen anything like it, but I have seen friends, family, clients get very sick from Hashimoto's and thyroid cancers. If their traumas aren't processed or they've gone through a divorce and all of a sudden things ignited. And my client, Nuji, also piped in on here saying, um, her autoimmune showed up after a major, major traumatic experience. Yeah. So there is a question from Sylvia. She asked, uh, she said, if she's here on behalf of a family member who needs help, but she doesn't speak English. Is your program translated into other languages or how can someone who doesn't speak English get help with this? Um, the key would probably be having somebody facilitate it for her who could take okay. it through our digital online program and maybe explain it. That probably would be the best way. Um, I did one, I did a, I guess it was a workshop for about 45 people down in Brazil. Some of them didn't speak English. Some of them did speak English. So about half and half. Some were just literally no English. Some were little bits. Yeah, And um, I had one guy sitting there and he had the trend. So we had a translator translating. Okay. And every once in a while, he'd take the headset off and he'd be looking at me and I couldn't get a read whether or not he was enjoying it, not enjoying it or what he was okay. experiencing. And then afterwards, he came up to me and he could speak enough English that he said, and he, he gave me this huge hug and he said, you've changed my life forever. Aww. And I had no, I couldn't pick up on what, I couldn't understand why I kept taking him on and off. I was thinking he was losing interest, but he wasn't, he was like right into it. So. Yeah. Oh, perfect. Okay. And the person is from Brazil. How funny. Oh, perfect. Oh, yeah. perfect. Okay. Um, so Pam wants to know, is listening to different brain waves helpful, like whole tones, et cetera? Sure, because it's going to help practice regulating your nervous system. So that's sort of the idea is to get your, because uh, your brain can be trained into doing this, you know, if the more you practice it. And the only difference is, and those are all great tools to use. However, if you haven't resolved the trauma, you're going to continually get activated. And then those tools, you have to keep using all the time to sort of try to regulate it. But it's the best thing to do is first get it resolved. And then those become phenomenal tools mm. because there's now nothing interfering with the training. Oh. That's why what we do is the first four hours is to update the explicit memory. And then the 30 days of audios are to retrain the associative pro programming memory awesome. system, right? 
I just, I hope you were all just able to just take that in because that was another real aha moment for me just then is really it's updating the brain. It's mm -hmm. really, and what I love about you, Dr. Wood, is just you have all of these really simple but effective ways to just tackle this and obliterate, you know, obliterate, just put it back in context so it doesn't take over your nervous system. And, and that's why I spend so much time on the education, because I don't want it to be a mystery. I want you to understand yeah. the science behind it. Yes. Because the reason this works is because it's using science on how the brain works. Yes. And it's not a mystery. Your brain is doing all the work. All I'm doing is guiding it through. But until you understand it, how would you know how to do this? I didn't know how to do it for my own wife until I did all the, the studying and all the research. And I was like, oh my gosh, this makes so much sense to me now. Of course, yeah. she's activating her nervous system. When I say, no, I don't like this, a whole bunch of her mind says, what do we know about men that start to get angry? And all the data about her father would come flooding in. Her nervous system would be then looking at all this data. Yeah. And, we, and she's crying because of not what I just said, but because of what her father had said during her childhood. Right. And then she'd become totally dysregulated. And I'm thinking, yeah. gosh, how could I continually make her cry? And I'm not trying to make her cry. Right. Yeah. And so, so you imagine what happens in relationships, right? Well, that's it. There's trauma. And then there's also the people pleasing <laughs> that yep. goes along with it. And yeah, that's a whole nother topic. But I, I a couple who ag ag aggravate or activate each other's nervous systems, and then they stop communicating. So the advantage my wife had is at least she wasn't activating my nervous system. Right. So I was able to stay fairly regulated. As she says, we were the perfect Petri dish because <laughs> she was really training me on how to how this program would work. Because I started changing the way I say things. I started changing the tone in my voice. I started choosing my words better. And yeah. that's when I realized, even though that wasn't working, I was really learning how, and that's why this program works, is it's your subconscious mind responds to stories, symbols, metaphors, inflection changes. Everything that I do in the program is designed to communicate with that part of the brain. And it naturally does it. Because when you're in that restorative mindset, the mind just, it's, uh, by the time we get to the traumas, it's like, whew, we just blow them over. Mm -hmm. The mind's like, let's go, let's fix this. Mm -hmm. Got it. Now we end, let's, let's do it. Yes. There was no greater high than when I finished your program. Like when I was fresh off it, it was amazing. So, just okay. Rob really, was just had a really great, I, I, if you want, I can just share this really quick. I just did Ben Greenfield's podcast. Yeah. Here. And um, there was a lady who went through the, through the podcast, or went through, listened to the podcast. Yeah. And this was last week. It aired on Friday of last week. And she just did it, uh, did the online program. And she wrote, she says, I'm going to try to keep it quite brief. She said, I've had asthma since I was age five. I've been trying a lot for the last six years, mostly nutrition and naturopathy, but a lot on the spiritual belief side too. And I had some relief a few years ago for six weeks and then early 2020, but I've been using a buterol to control it. Usually wheezy when I wake up and after every meal and mostly wake up in the night and use it once or twice. She says, I was on day five of a juice cleanse and at my wits end and it was only getting worse when I listened to you on Ben's podcast. I was reluctant to throw more money at this, to be honest, but it really resonated. I tried the Gupta program earlier this year, which is similar and couldn't get to any grips with it. She goes, anyways, I really love the four hours. Not much of the info content was new to me, but the trauma reprogramming was amazing. I woke up on Tuesday morning, literally in shock that I had slept through the, the night, first time in a year. Yeah. She's, and I wasn't gasping for air. She says, it reduced my uh, albuterol by 70% immediately. She goes, last night I had more deep, deep sleep. I measured it with the aura ring than I've ever had before. And again, I didn't wake up in the night wheezing or the next morning. So we'll see how, it's go, how it goes. I'm so grateful and excited for the work. And I feel like now my body's going to use that extra energy that it's been looking for for those threats to now heal. Beautiful. Bravo. I just shared that with Ben and Ben's going to put that out 
that is me. I mean, that's life's work right yeah. there, truly. Yeah. So you have a bunch of questions that people are asking. So I want to I want to address yeah. those. <laughs> um, Rob wants to know what are your thoughts on anxiety and depression meds? Can your techniques eliminate them, or do they complement your treatments? Um, my my goal is medication is fine if it's used to help you get through. If it becomes a lifestyle, that's where I'm not for medicine. And yes, we definitely our goal is to get you off of medication. And so when we have people go through our program, they generally are coming off of all their medications. So the medications help to an extent, but they shouldn't be used forever. And, and here's one of the ways I explain depression is you remember what I was saying is if your mind is looping through this trauma and it keeps calling for you to do something, right? For Rebecca, it was trying to get her to run from a bomb five years earlier, right? It wasn't possible, but it kept calling and calling for the action. So if your mind keeps calling for the action by using an emotion and you don't accomplish it because you can't accomplish it, you can't do anything about what already happened, your mind shuts down. Depression is the absence of emotions. The mind stops calling for the action, so it shuts down to protect you. Once we resolve what your mind has been asking you to do and it stops calling for the action, the depression lifts because the, everything is a purpose. Your mind does everything for a reason. This is the one myth that I really think is so important to understand. People will say, I sabotage myself all the time. And what I say to them is it's impossible to sabotage yourself. I know this is really a different way of thinking. Your brain is designed to survive. It will do whatever it has to, to keep you away from pain and to keep you away from being hurt. It may look like, why would I go and quit that job and go over there, right? And then take less pay it's because your mind thought you were going to run right into pain. So it creates another way to get around it. The brain cannot sabotage itself. It's survival based at any cost. That's why people jumped out of the buildings at 9-11. They weren't jumping to die. They were jumping because they were going to die. Right. And they would do anything to survive, even if it was just for a few more seconds, because something could happen. Maybe there's a break. Something happens to me. Yeah. So that, out. so depression, anxiety is worrying about what hasn't happened. Depression is a shutdown of your mind hasn't been able to accomplish what it's been trying to do. Yeah. So no wonder it's a vicious cycle. I mean, it's so easy to just keep going around that mirror, staying on the merry-go-round. Yep. So we can definitely help with the medications. Yeah, but there's hope to come off them when you do the work. Yes. And like I said, we had uh, one of, our, if you look at our testimonials, Michelle came in with 17 years of addiction. I mean, she was on everything. She's pretty open about it. She was on every drug you could imagine. And she was on seven medications. Within three months, she was on zero medications. That was over two years ago. She's never touched a drug since. She stopped smoking within four days and she's getting her daughter back. She had lost her daughter. The courts took her daughter. Oh, away. she's getting her back. I remember yes. the story. But with antidepressants, we want to be clear, there's a weaning process too. So you your body sure. doesn't have- yeah. Work with your doctor, right? On yeah. it. Because again, do your doctors own. will try to get you off it if you can. I mean, their goal is to try to help you. Yeah. Well. Don't just like leave this master class and say, I'm going to just go off my antidepressants. Like, don't do that. Okay. No. Let's just put that Absolutely. up. <laughs> okay. And I want to take a minute to answer this one from Pam. How do you know if trauma is the cause of autoimmune diseases? Does it need to be identified if there's no major trauma? There are so many theories and so much science that is unknown on this. I have seen autoimmune um, titers falsely elevated from anything from Lyme to Epstein-Barr or Epstein-Barr turning on Lyme titers. Sometimes it's trauma. You know, they say genes are the gun, environment pulls the trigger. So it, it can be trauma, but it can also be environmental illness, mold exposure, mercury toxicity. Um, the, there are so many things. I, from my perspective, Dr. Wood, I'm curious what your are yours are that are not trauma-based that can turn uh, the genes on that cause illness. Sometimes it can be food, it can be gut bugs, you know, something that is a shift. I mean, there's, there are doctors out there that say we all have the genes for cancer, but not everyone expresses them. Well, why? 
Is it, again, is it a trauma? Is it food? Is it lifestyle? What's causing it? There's so many factors. There's not always one thing. Yeah, there, there's obviously a lot. In my experience, a lot of it's coming from trauma. Mm -hmm. But I believe there's also other, uh, like you said, environmental things that can happen. You can get Lyme, things like that. So, but the idea, and this is the way I think about it, is if you get that update done and you get that trauma resolved, now you have more energy, more power to do maintenance. So that's the one advantage. And so, you know, I've seen people who have, you know, gone through and they've had some of those things, but if you're not, your mind is focused so much on trauma, I believe a lot of times those things are coming in because your system cannot, I mean, my daughter's Crohn's is gone. She hasn't had a Crohn's flare up. And the only thing she did was this program because she did all the other stuff, you know, off of gluten, off of dairy, doing all the different things, trying to eat right. And yet none of that was working. And it wasn't until the trauma was resolved that I believe her body had then got the maintenance done that it couldn't do when it was constantly in a fight or flight state. There's a great documentary. I don't know if you've seen it called Heal, uh, H-E-A-L. I, I haven't seen it all, but I did see pieces of us. People yeah. And it, well, and in the beginning, they talk about, you know, the top 11 modalities of healing known to man and the, and the top two are mind, yes. mental mind. So the mind body connection is, is truly real. I always talk about, think of the, the brain, the mind as the computer, the body's the printer. So if the computer yes. is not sending the correct messages because there's glitches and error messages, the body's going to get affected. Yeah. The body responds to the signals that it's getting from the brain. The brain is, is a command center. Yes. And you know, stress from the hormone perspective that I see, because primarily I, the majority of people who come and see me are in perimenopause or menopause. And um, I see a direct correlation when I look at progesterone and estrogen, testosterone, you know, I always say stress drives hormones from the top down. Um, and mindset drives hormones from the top down. I see this in my men too. I do hormone testing on men and I have seen massive improvements in cortisol levels when people do some lifestyle changes, make some and manage stress and switch up their exercise and maybe get off excessive amounts of caffeine and balance their diet and change jobs. And I literally see the numbers change on lab tests. How there, it changes. Well, so it's a great example of that. And this is, you know, so much of what you do is I had a lady call me up and she says, I've been really researching and I think my daughter's really low on serotonin. Mm -hmm. That explains a lot of the stuff that she's dealing with. So she says, can you measure that? And I said, well, I can, we have an AO scan that we use. I said, I can tell you if it's high or low or in balance. Yeah. And she came in, we did the whole scan for her. And I said, if you're looking for is serotonin low, you have found it. Yes, it is low. However, that's not the problem. That's the symptom. Her gut is so far out of balance. I said, what is she eating? Like, is there something going on? She had a horrible diet, <laughs> sugar, all kinds. I said, the serotonin is low because the gut's out of balance. Yeah. I said, so get that back in balance and then let's look at it. Yes. because that's going to throw off. I says, but if you went right and looked for the serotonin problem, you would have found it and they would have probably put her on 5-HTP or some other supplement. She goes, they put me on that. And I says, it didn't work, right? She goes, no, it didn't help. I says, because it wasn't the problem. Right, right. And I always joke that, you know, depres depression is not a Wellbutrin deficiency, <laughs> right? And yeah. it's really... You've got to deal with the root causes always. And yes, sometimes there's environmental, sometimes it's, uh, you know, nutrient poor diet. Um, and sometimes it's trauma and sometimes it's all three. Yep. So you have to peel away the layers of the onion and the two, the nice thing is the two complement each other. I mean, eating well is going to be supportive no matter where you are mentally. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so I mean, look at me. The sure. body to the brain is going to be, we're feeling good. That's right. Yeah. If the body yeah. sends, sends, you know, deficiency stuff to the brain, then the brain interprets that as a threat. And then that creates stress. And then that aggravates the system even more. 
Yes, and there are somebody else also Susie asked a question, how can an emotionally traumatic event cause inflammation in the body? Well, an emotionally traumatic, any trauma um, puts you in a fight or flight state. Well, what's happening there? Go back to the times when we were cavemen and hunter gatherers, right? We'd be asleep in the cave and all of a sudden a bear or a tiger would, would wander in in the middle of the night and we would be wide awake. Where do you think the blood in your body is gonna go at that point? It's not going to go to your digestive system to start digesting your food. It's gonna to go to your extremities so you can get the hell out of there and run and save your life. So genetically, we're still programmed when we go through stress or trauma <clears throat> to have the fight or flight response. So imagine if you've ever, I, if you've ever been through what I jokingly call the dump dinner, like I remember going to dinner with a boyfriend and I was like, he's going to break up with me. I know it. He's going to dump me over dinner. And sure enough, I was right. You know, tales of cheating and gallivanting presented themselves. And my stomach was in knots. I couldn't eat anything because your body, your liver tells your, um, tells your body and your stomach not to produce any hydrochloric acid. It says, do not digest anything right now. You need to run. Your blood's going to be shunted to your extremities and hopefully your brain too. It's not the time to be eating or digesting. And that's why a lot of people are really bloated too, is they're eating at their computer or, you know, eating stressful or you're eating in, I call it dashboard dining, like eating in the car to run kids to activities. You're not present, you're not even chewing your food or swallowing and you're stressed out and your digestion is shutting down. And there's studies that show people with chronic stress, the, the villi, the surface area of the intestinal tract is normally bumpy. It looks like a head of broccoli, but when you're stressed, it flattens out. You're not supposed to even absorb nutrients. Your body doesn't want food at that point. And yet if you're eating, you have very poor digestion. And over time, Susie, that's a long-winded way of saying that can cause chronic inflammation, can cause a leaky gut, it can cause bacterial overgrowth that's very unhealthy. So, and, and chronically high cortisol too can do that, can give you a nice inflam inflammatory belly and a muffin top that turns into a cake top. So you really do have to get the stress under control. So that's where, you know, deep breathing, Dr. Wood's audios are very helpful. They reprogram your subconscious. You don't even have to, this was the best part of his program, guys. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to like make any special food. Like more, my clients need to often do some meal prep and shopping. Your people get to lie in bed, okay? <laughs> and just listen to an audio. You can even fall asleep during these audios, which I can attest to. I used to use them to go to sleep. Your brain is like working away while you sleep and it doesn't it does. you have to do anything. In fact, you're gonna wake up and be like, man, I feel very happy today. Yep. So um, it's really important. So and just to add to that with the inflammation is the, the response to trauma is inflammation. And the purpose of the inflammation is to protect the system. <clears throat> system goes, so the inflammation, the cells become hardened and, and expand to protect it against anything penetrating the cell. So nothing's gonna get into the cell at that point, but nothing's gonna get out of the cell. It's a temporary pause in the system to protect it until the danger passes. And then the immune system will come in and clean up. The problem is, is if you have memory of the danger, the danger doesn't pass. The danger stay, so the cells stay in an active danger response. So if somebody starts punching me in the shoulder, what's the response? Inflammation, right? To protect the system get more blood flow in there, allow it to heal, start the healing process. It's not going to start healing until the danger stops. If a person keeps on hitting me, it's not going to stop. That's what memory is doing. It continues to hit you and hit you. So you keep that emotional concussion going and the concussion is not healing. That's it. The emotional concussion. Another one of your good Dr. Woodisms. They're just perfect descriptors of what happens. Yep. So you guys being respectful of Dr. Wood's time, I know he has to jump, but I want to put um, 
an offer in the chat box to everyone. Um, and I will also send an email to everyone who registered. Um, Dr. Wood has, do you, do you wanna talk about what you've generously offered everyone, Dr. Wood? Yeah, so I think if you go to, it should be in the show notes, or whatever, you go to Get Tip. The program is called okay. Tip. I think I saw that question asked. T I P P, yeah. the Inspired Performance Program. Get and it's tip. in the chat box. Yep, slash Esther. Um, I think it's, uh, we're giving away a chapter of the book, of the Emotional Concussions book. So you can sort of get a little idea on what we're doing and what we're talking about. And then I think if you also, uh, if you sign up for the program, I think there's also a discount on the program as well. You know, Which that's coming you, from Esther. You all would be so foolish not to take advantage of this. It's, I've never seen it offered at this price before. Um, so please take advantage. And on my end, certainly for those of you who want to get a strategy call in the book where we do 30 minutes on the phone of laser focused coaching to give you three specific customized tools that you can take with you to get you started right away. Just get in my calendar, estherblum.com forward slash call. I should have about five spots open next week that you can hop into. So Dr. Wood, I cannot thank you enough for sharing your wisdom with all of us. And um, just am so grateful that you um, so generously gifted us your time today and your, uh, you know, your expertise. It's just, it's been absolutely lovely spending time with you and getting to see you again. Oh, it's great. Great to see you. And, and I love sharing this kind of stuff. And I know the kind of work that you do and the people that you're working with, you know, I, it's a passion of yours and mine to try to yeah. people get better and, and heal. And that's, that's really our mission. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Okay. Yeah. Well, big hugs that's to you. Time. Thanks. And we'll make sure if those questions aren't answered, we'll get those answers to you. So yeah. You know, so you can send them to me if you want, to, or we can answer them together and send back, make sure everybody gets their questions answered. Okay, yes, I will definitely. Um, I, I think we got everyone. Okay. Uh, I think we got everyone. Okay, beautiful. All right, very good. Thanks. All right, nice seeing you again. All take right, care. take care. <laughs> Bye. Bye-bye.